Welcome to another week of live IELTS classes presented to you by AEHelp.com and GIELTSHelp.com. I hope everybody is having a good start to their week and looking forward to a productive rest of the week ahead. I'm streaming this class live to you from beautiful Budapest where it's nice and sunny. Hi Kyber, hi Jashan, hi Rohit, Winda, Vandana, Kamal, Flower Sun, Taral, and our many other students from around the world. Again, this class is presented to you by aehelp.com for the academic version of the IELTS exam. Check us out there to prepare and get those high band scores. Hi Rajveer, hi Vimal, and hi Bumi. Nice to see our members joining in as well. And for general IELTS, check us out at gielteshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com on both of our websites. We have loads and loads of great materials for you. This is our academic website here. Click that big red button to join the premium package. Spend a couple dollars to gain a lot of great materials. We probably offer the best value per dollar for any online IELTS training program in the world. This is our general IELTS website here with the green background. Click that big red button there to get access to over 100 hours of video lessons, original practice exams, a mobile app, and a fully interactive course. All right. Uh, Hemant is asking about letter writing for general IELTS. Hemant, you can also check out our general IELTS YouTube channel, which is general IELTS help. And we have examples there for letter writing and also lots of examples for letter writing on our general IELTS website. All right, everyone. If you have questions, comments, concerns about our products or the exam, uh, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly respond in due time. If you like to uh, have paperback versions of our exams to follow along with these classes, you can order our exam books from Amazon, AE Helps Academic IELTS, or GE Helps General IELTS. Hi, Elena. Nice to see you in class. And our classes for the next few days today, speaking part one, talking a little bit about how to impress the examiner. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll start a task two for members, followed by listening parts one and two for everyone. You can see the rest of this schedule on the YouTube community board. All right. So, uh, I'll speaking part one, you want to impress the examiner. Step number one, be confident. Okay. All right, so uh, I'm gonna focus this lesson on key points to really impress the examiner, okay? So impressing the examiner. Number one, show confidence right away. Okay, greet the examiner and give your full name. Speak loud and clear. So uh, here's a question that you will be asked. What is your full name? Give me some answers for this, students. What is your full name? I'll give you an answer that impresses the examiner. So my surname is Anderson. And my given name is Michael. Please just call me Mike for short. All right. So here's my response. What is your full name? My surname is Anderson and my given name is Michael. Please just call me Mike for short. Why does that impress the examiner? Well, for a couple reasons. Uh, surname is better lexical resource, knowing another way to express family name. And then um, knowing given name, it's a very nice full complete sentence. 
and please just call me Mike for short is kind of an expression. So right away you're showing coherence, fluency, lexical resource, and even an expression like call me Mike for short. Okay. All right. I see some other students stepping up to the challenge. Bekjan Omirzak says, my full name is Omirzak Bekjan, but please call me by my nickname, which is Becca. Very nice, Bekjan. That's another impressive way to introduce yourself using which is for the response shows that you can use adjective clauses. So very good, Bekjan. Kamal Sharma says, my full name is Kamal Sharma. You can call me by my given name, Kamal. Uh, Kamal, a clear way is please call me by my given name, Kamal. Please, you can call me by my is a bit awkward English, so careful with that. Elena Mori says, my first name is Elena. My last name is Mori. Please call me Elena. That's nice, sweet, and to the point, Elena, it works. All right. So the next question, most of the time, is may I see your identification, please? Sometimes they'll ask you this question before they ask for your name. Sometimes not. Sometimes they'll ask for your name first. So may I see your identification, please? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Again, be confident, be loud. Yes, of course. Here is my passport, which I used for registration. Please take a look. All right. So again, impressing the examiner, showing the examiner that you're prepared, that you know these questions are coming. Yes, of course, here's my passport, which I used for registration. Please take a look. Complete sentence, showing fluency, using an adjective clause, showing that you prepared for this exam. That's your ticket to get those high band scores, okay? Impressing the examiner. Let's see what other students have come up with. All right. Andres Sanchez, Andres Sanchez says, yes, of course, here's my passport, which I used for registration. Please take a look. Very nice, Andres. You mirrored exactly what I did. So definitely you are on the right track. Bobby Singh says, yes, you can check my passport. It is my identification that I used for registration. Bobby, I would definitely finish that second statement with, it is my identification that I used for registration. Okay. Because of course, as all of you should know, you need to bring the same ID for your sit down written exam and your speaking exam as the one that you used for your registration documents a couple weeks earlier. Okay. All right. Hemant says, yes, you can. Here's my passport. The one I used for registration. Uh, please have a look. Good Hemant. Instead of saying the one I used for registration, you may have more than one passport. I do. I have a couple of them. If you're a dual or triple citizen. Otherwise, Hemant, it's better to say it's the ID that I use for registration. If you say it's the one I use for registration, it implies or suggests that you have another passport, which is possible, but maybe less likely. Abhishek says, yeah, sure. Here's my passport, which I use for registration purposes. Please take a look. I like it. I like your use of the word purposes, Abhishek. Why not build that lexical resource mark right off the bat? It's definitely one of the important elements to getting those high band scores is lexical resource. It means using a broad range of vocabulary, expressions, natural language. Okay. All right. So now let's go to part one. Okay. 
You'll probably get a couple more maybe warm-up questions that you saw there on the board just to make you feel more comfortable. However, we're going to skip those for today and get right into our general part one questions that are asking about you and your life. Okay, so let's get into part one. The examiner will introduce uh, this topic of part one by saying, let's talk about, and they'll say something like, let's talk about losing and finding. You've probably heard other topics like, let's talk about paper and pencil and lots and lots of other topics, okay? If it seems a little bit awkward or strange, like losing and finding, what? Um, that's okay, don't panic, okay? Stay calm. These questions are meant to be fairly easy in part one. The IELTS is always working hard to come up with new questions, okay? So they don't want to repeat the same questions that they asked in previous exams, especially within the last year. So they're always working hard to come up with some new questions and sometimes it might seem a little bit awkward as a result, okay? So here we go. Let's talk about losing and finding. So you hear this question. How often do you lose something? How often do you lose something? Well, that's kind of an interesting question. The key here is how often. When you hear this in part one, how often, what kind of language is the examiner looking for? Can anybody tell me? So before we actually answer this question together, okay, when you hear how often, don't worry about the rest of the question for now, but how often, when you hear that question, what is the examiner looking for? What type of language are they looking for? Okay, Begjun says something about frequency. Kyber Moman says they're looking for adverbs of frequency. And Nazir Ahmed saying some kind of quantitative language as well. Yeah, absolutely. So they're looking for what's called adverbs of frequency. Okay, adverbs of frequency include always, sometimes, or usually, often, sometimes, I'm going in order here, uh, rarely, and never. Okay, plus, if you really want to impress the examiner, so you want the examiner to give you that band eight, band nine, okay, then you're also looking for quantitative language. Quantitative language means numbers, like once, twice, three times, and so on, all right? Because always, usually, often, sometimes, rarely, never, that language is called qualitative language. Okay, so what you want to do to impress the examiner and get that high, high, high band score is you want a combination of adverbs of frequency, something like usually or sometimes, combined with once or twice a week. Okay, so let's try that. So give me some answers now for this question that impressed the examiner. How often do you lose something? Okay, give me a nice answer. I'll look at your answers in a moment and I'm going to put one up here as well. All right, 
here we go, students. So here's my answer. I occasionally misplace my belongings. I would say at least once a week. Just yesterday, I was looking everywhere for my keys and finally found them behind my nightstand. Okay, nightstand is that little table that's beside your bed. So here, I'm giving an answer. I occasionally misplace my belongings. Occasionally is kind of like sometimes. So it's my qualitative adverb of frequency. Then I say, I would say at least once a week. So that's my quantitative language. And instead of saying, for example, I'm just giving a smooth flowing example. So just yesterday, I was looking everywhere for my keys and finally found them behind my nightstand, showing that lexical resource as well. Repeat after me, students, question and answer. How often do you lose something? I occasionally misplace my belongings. I would say at least once a week. Just yesterday, I was looking everywhere for my keys and I finally found them behind my nightstand. That's your band nine. That's how you impress the examiner, okay? All right, let's see what some students came up with. Here we go. Tural Ismailov says, I never lose my objects as I am quite a careful type of person. I can easily keep the place of objects in mind. I can easily keep in mind where I put my belongings. Therefore, I don't face such problems. Okay, good, Taral. Sure, why not? Kyber Moman says, I rarely lose my items. I would say once a week because I always set a reminder and put belongings back to where they belong. Although I'm pretty busy in the daytime, I can still remember where they are later on. Very nice, Kyber Moman. Nice answer, nice fluency. Excellent. Keep it up, students. Gamer King says, I always lose my belongings. Last time I lost my keys to my scooter and I'm still looking for them. All right. Very good, Gamer King. Very good. Quick, sweet, expressive works. Shalini Asokan says, I usually lose small items very frequently. I'm not able to quantify how often, but I tend to misplace my house keys and other items. I kind of lost the end there, but it was good. Okay, that was good. All right, I'm seeing some very nice answers. Pervez Kuleyev says, I rarely lose my stuff, maybe once a month. For example, last month I lost my wallet, but luckily, I found it on top of the refrigerator. Yeah, that's a sneaky spot in the house, the top of the refrigerator, because it's out of the uh, field of view, right? Pervies, nicely done. I'm glad you found your wallet. That's a painful one to lose, all right? Uh, Pervies, don't use the uh, leading expression, for example. Uh, examiners are afraid of this word, for example, or for instance, just because oftentimes when students use these words, they tend to keep talking and going off topic. So the examiner is forced to uh, cut the student off and go to the next question. So here's a tip, students, okay? Uh, to avoid being interrupted by the examiner, avoid using the leading expressions in our old lessons, we used to teach this because it used to work in the speaking exam, but then so many students started to say, for example, for instance, and then just talk, 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 that examiners started to interrupt students when they heard the phrase, for instance, like, oh, okay, here goes the student. I'm going to interrupt, cut them off, go to the next question. So that doesn't mean don't give examples. No, give examples. Examples are very important. Just don't say for example or for instance. So to avoid being interrupted by the examiner, avoid using the leading expressions for example, for instance, okay? Instead, just give the example. If you are stating a relevant and clear example, you shouldn't need to introduce it. OK, 
Okay. Otherwise, you can use expressions like just, like, as. Okay. In most cases, though, just go into it. I hope that makes sense. All right. So avoid, for instance, avoid, for example. Okay, let's go to the next uh, question here. Here we go. Uh, who can help you find lost items? Mm, that's an interesting question. Give me some nice full sentence answers to this one. So who can help you find lost items? Let's see what you come up with for this one. In this case, I'll let you start and then I'll follow. So who can help you find lost items? Okay, Kyber Moman says, of course, my mom, who has always helped me whenever I don't know where I put my belongings back. Like yesterday, when I lost my headphones to my iPod, my mother found it under my bed. Nice, Kyber. Yeah, we don't have to overcomplicate it. Sometimes my mom helps me find my items even though she doesn't live with me anymore. She just knows me that well. She's like, well, honey, have you checked in the kitchen cupboard? That's usually where you put them. And I'm like, mom, how did you know? It's in the kitchen. You're not even in my house. So yeah, mom always knows. Absolutely. Tito Bati says, yes, I have a best friend of my age and we are really close. Mostly I can call him to help me find something and he's really reliable and friendly. So he helps me all the time when I lose some personal belongings. Nice, Tito. That works. Switch up the words, Tito. Work hard to paraphrase. Switch up the words. Okay. All right. Don't just use the word something, students. Use the word belongings, personal items. Okay. Roshni Kunte says, well, uh, one way to retrieve lost items is to remember when I la last used them um, and keep some odd items like potatoes to remind myself like my father always puts a small tomato on notes. Okay, that's an interesting strategy, Roshni. I've never thought about that, but why not? It works. All right, Vincent Paul. Sentino says, I usually misplace my keys to my motorcycle. And it's hard for me to find it for several days until I finally find it in my bag. The person who usually can help me to find these keys is my son, my wife, my best friend, my girlfriend. All right, Vincent, I'm not sure if you're answering this question here or not, but... Here goes Andres. Andres Sanchez says, my wife has a superpower. She always knows where I leave my stuff. Just yesterday, I couldn't find my Apple Watch and she found it in the sofa. Yeah, that's a great answer, Andres. I like it. All right. After searching high and low for stuff, that I lose in my home, it's usually my wife who I can turn to for help. She seems to have some sort of superpower for finding misplaced items. Just yesterday, she located my iPod Touch that I'd been looking for for the past month. I was truly amazed. All right. Here we go, students. So repeat after me. Nice fluency answering the question. 
Who can help you find lost items? After searching high and low for stuff that I lose in my home, it's usually my wife who I can turn to for help. She seems to have some sort of superpower for finding misplaced items. Thank you for that, Andres. Uh, just yesterday, she located my iPod Touch that I'd been looking for for the past month. It was, I was truly amazed. Okay, uh, why does this impress the examiner after searching high and low? That's an expression that you searched everywhere. So that will get you lexical resource marks. Okay, it's usually my wife who I can turn to for help. Again, using idiomatic language combined with an adjective clause who. This is getting me lots and lots of points to get those high band scores. She seems to have some sort of superpower for finding misplaced items. As Andres Sanchez said very nicely with the word superpower, that's unique and original language. It's your style of diction. It's your style of speech that gets you points, okay? The examiners don't like to hear memorized phrases that they feel students are just using because they learned in some IELTS class to say that for high band scores. They like to hear original speech, okay? Just yesterday, she located my iPod Touch that I'd been looking for. I had been looking. I had been looking is past perfect progressive. Using present perfect progressive, past perfect progressive correctly will get you those high band scores for grammatical range. That's what they're marking you on as well. So to impress the examiner, make sure to use a wide range of grammar, okay? All right. Here we go, students. You're doing fantastic, and I want you to keep going just the same. If I miss your comment or your response, don't threat. I'll try to catch you the next time. I'm always looking to read different comments from different students in these classes. Here's the next question. Did you lose anything important before? Or have you lost anything important before? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay. Elena Mori says, yeah, almost three years ago, I lost my Samsung Galaxy J5 handset, most probably on the bus. Some really important uh, things like a scanned copy of my high school mark sheet and my driver's license was on it. It was really disappointing. I had a hard time replacing it. It was not only expensive, but also uh, a really valuable item, okay, personally. So Elena, try to finish that off a little bit. Uh, I see you have more there, Elena. Although there are scanned copies, but they reveal my identity, which was really scary for me. Yeah, for identity theft, sure. Here we go. Uh, King Iles says, I can remember when I lost my new mobile phone when I was going to school. After arriving there, I looked and I knew my phone was gone. After about six hours, I found it by... Uh, using a tracking program. Yeah, find my phone on, on uh, Google. Guys, I've used that. It's happened to me before as well. If that happens, find my phone on Google. It's really, really useful. Find my phone. And you, have, you should use it in English. It works better. Okay. All right. Jay Kira says, Yes, I lost my expensive goggles last week. It was gifted, they, they were gifted to be me by my mom uh, and they were dear to my heart. They had a lot of sentimental value. So Jay Kira, one more time, goggles, plural, right? Glasses, one, two, goggles, same thing, one, two. So they're plural, you have to use plural, Jay. So yes, I lost my expensive goggles last week. They were gifted to me by my mom. So they were close to my heart and it made me really sad to lose them. Maksud says, yes, definitely. Once I lost 
my valuable laptop. I was in shock, but a good and honest man returned it. That moment, I felt immensely glad. I thanked him and gave him some reward money. Okay, Maksud, I made some corrections there. Pay attention to that. If I'm not pronouncing everybody's name as it should be pronounced, my apologies for that. As you can imagine, it's quite challenging to pronounce names from all over the world. All right. Uh, Ngam An says, as I had just mentioned, I lost my teddy bear, uh, which was one of the most valuable items from my childhood. It helped me to sleep well, and I was truly upset. Farwa Yunus says, yeah, I lost a beautiful bracelet that was not very expensive, but it was a gift and it was quite dear to me. So I was saddened to uh, have it gone. Okay, uh, finish your sentences, students. Finish your sentences. Nor Afika says, I lost my calculator in the past. Um just before my math exam and it turned out that my classmate had my calculator. I was glad to find it but it was a bit late because I was unable to answer some of the questions on the exam. So again, Noor, finish the idea. Why was it bad that you lost it and you didn't have it for the exam? Okay. Hemant Sharma says, yes, I had a frightening experience four years back in China when I lost my passport at the currency exchange desk in my hotel. Uh, with the help of closed circuit television, uh, I located it uh, in the corridor of the pool bar. Very nice, Hemant. Good job. All right. Nice answer. Good lexical resource. All right. Daman Preet Kaur says, certainly almost two months ago, I lost my registered certificate for my vehicle and I was not able to drive. The only thing I could do was uh, filing an FIR at the police station. Very nice. Okay, some great answers there, students. Very good. Yes, it's shocking to admit, but about... Half a decade ago, I lost my wedding ring during a morning run. Not only was it quite valuable, worth a couple thousand dollars, but of course, it had huge sentimental value. I was depressed for about a week, but fortunately, my wife forgave me and bought me a new one. <laughs> All right. So, uh, here we go. Uh, repeat after me. Did you lose anything important before? Yes, it's shocking to admit, but about half a decade ago, I lost my wedding ring during a morning run. Not only was it quite valuable, worth a couple thousand dollars, but of course, it had huge sentimental value. I was depressed for about a week, but fortunately, my wife forgave me and bought me a new one. All right. Uh, sentimental value. Remember this collocation here, students. Sentimental value. Uh, sentiment means it's with feelings or with emotions. Sentimental value means a lot of emotional value. Okay, and so learn this. Sentimental value. It means valuable because... because of memories and emotions that are connected with it. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, 
Here we go, students. Next question. How do you feel when you lose your belongings? Um, what kind of grammar is this question looking for? Before you give me the answer here, what kind of grammar is this looking for? This question. So how do you feel when you lose your belongings? What kind of grammar do you think the examiner is fishing for? What are they hoping to hear in your response? It's not past perfect, Ali 360. It's not necessarily past simple. It could be those, but there's something more important here. Uh, it's probably present tense because it's generally true. But other than present tense, yeah, so King Al says it's a conditional type one. Okay, so they're looking for what's called a real conditional. Okay, plus present tense if you really want to know the tense. Okay, because it's asking in the general sense. Okay, but here... The examiner is looking for a condition. When you lose your belongings, how do you feel? How do you feel when you lose your belongings? Okay, so condition is really what they're looking for here. And you need to express that. So if you say, um, I feel sad. <laughs> if this is your answer, you're probably getting a band four because that's three words, okay? Even though in real life, that would be an okay answer. Uh, on the IELTS, you need to be more expressive. You need to add at least, I feel sad when I lose my belongings, okay? So you've gone up to a band seven now, at least, all right? So you have to include elements of the question. Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So how do you feel when you lose your belongings? Taral Ismailov says, if I lose any of my belongings, especially those that are valuable and precious for me, I feel terrible, like it's the end of the world. Very nice, Taral. Using similes, similes means like it's the end of the world, comparing it to another state. That's great. Similes are good. Good, Taral. Okay. All right. One of our members, I'm sorry, I can't read this Cyrillic, says, usually I feel very upset and lost if I lose some of my belongings. Okay, nice. Um, give me an example. Students, give me an example for these kinds of questions. Remember, those examples build your fluency and allow you to express more grammar and more lexical resource. Don't just keep talking and go off topic. That's not good. But definitely give robust, complete answers. All right? Flower Sun says, if I lose my belongings, I will try to stay calm and figure out why my personal things have any target objects for others to take. Hmm, Flower Sun, that second half of that response is quite awkward. Let me try to figure it out. If I lose my belongings, I will try to stay calm and figure out where I could have placed the item or who might have taken it for what reason. Okay, Flower Sun, I think... That's what you're trying to say. All right. Muneet Kumar says, whenever I lose my belongings, I feel extremely sorrowful because I have some sentimental value uh, attached with a lot of my stuff um, and I can't forget these easily. Okay, Puneet, good job to use the new vocabulary right away. Very nice. Okay. So... How do you feel when you lose your belongings? Most of the time, when I lose my personal stuff, I feel frustrated and angry because 
as I had said, much of my things have sentimental attachment. And I've worked hard to acquire them after some time I calm down collect myself and try to retrace my steps to figure out what had happened all right so here we go. Repeat after me. How do you feel when you lose your belongings? Most of the time when I lose my personal stuff, I feel frustrated and angry because, as I had said, much of my things have sentimental attachment and I've worked hard to acquire them. After some time, I calm down, collect myself, and try to retrace my steps to figure out what had happened. Take note of all of the complex grammar there. Again, using a lot of different vocabulary. Uh, retrace means to go back and try to go through the same steps. Okay, this morning I woke up. First, I went to the bathroom to brush my teeth. Then I remember going to the kitchen, pouring myself a glass of orange juice. So this is what's called retracing your steps. Okay. Hope that makes sense. All right, next question. Here we go. Have you found anything valuable before? Now, this one here is clearly looking for present perfect, right? Have you found anything valuable before? All right, students. Here we go. Give me some nice full sentence answers for this one. Have you found anything valuable before? Okay. Give me a nice full sentence answer. Using present perfect. Okay. FF571 says, when I was knee high to a grasshopper, I lost my toy, which was really valuable for me. At that time, I lost my personal stuff. Um, FF571, when I was knee high to a grasshopper, it kind of just sounds like you're forcing that expression into your response to tell me that when you were a small child. And that won't really get you marks so much, okay? Because it's not really connected to finding and losing. You could use that in any question to say that when you were a child. So if you want to use an idiom or an expression to get a high band score students, it's important that that idiom or expression is actually connected to the topic of the questions. So like I said before, I've searched high and low. That's connected to finding and losing. Okay. All right. Those will get you way more band scores. Just keep that in mind. FF571, use your expressions, but keep in mind that to get high band scores, you want to use expressions that are relevant to the topic and not just expressions that could be used in any context. Okay. Those are the ones that get you the high points. All right. Uh, Daman Preet Kaur says, certainly I have found a wallet just a few weeks ago. It was lying on the street when I was going to the supermarket on foot. I took it to the police station and filed a report. Good for you, Daman. Uh, Elena Mori says, yes, I have found a valuable item a few months back. It was my Cisco certified network professional training certificate. I completed that course four years ago and I hadn't seen the certificate since. 
Elena, if you can finish that sentence with, and I hadn't seen the certificate since, you'll get a better mark. Abdul Hamid says, yes, I had found a childhood photo of mine, which was missed when we moved houses a year ago. It brought, brought back fond memories, so I was very happy about it. Abdul Hamid, finish the idea, okay? All right. Marie Alba says, yes, I retrieved my mother's earrings under her bed, which she misplaced about a week ago. When I handed them to her, she was obviously overjoyed and treated me to a nice meal outside. Okay, good. Marie, nice. Rahul Preet Manga says, yes, I found a wallet about a month ago when I was going for my morning walk, which contained all kinds of cards, a driving li license um, of the person who lost it. With the help of the driving license, I got the wallet back to its rightful owner. Rightful owner, Rahul Preet. It's a nice expression there. Saloni such Deva says, certainly it has been one month back when I found a valuable iPhone 10. It was super expensive and it was gifted to my brother. He's very close to me. At the time, I felt good about it. All right, Saloni, I kind of get it. You found the iPhone 10 and then you gave it to your brother, something like that. Okay, be clear. Kaka Yo-Yo says, uh, about a decade back, I, f I had found a bag on the street which belonged to a man who was uh, disabled. He was unable to walk. He kept his special car key in it, and uh, he wasn't able to go anywhere without it. All right, Kaka, it's a good idea. Just be careful that you can express clearly what you're talking about. So um, I had found a bag on the street about a decade ago, which belonged to a man who had mobility difficulties. He wasn't able to walk. The bag contained a special set of keys uh, for his vehicle, so he was extremely happy to get it back. Kaka, be really careful, okay? So, yes, I have found valuable items on a couple of occasions in the past. Once I remember finding an expensive gold watch at the swimming pool, which I returned to the front desk. About a week later, I got a call from its owner who popped by my flat and gave me a $20 cash reward. All right. So uh, again, use the present perfect, use the past perfect, but use the perfect tense. You have to impress your examiner. You have to use the perfect tense. Here we go, students. Repeat after me. Have you found anything valuable before? Yes, I have found valuable items on a couple of occasions in the past. Once, I remember finding an expensive gold watch at the swimming pool, which I returned to the front desk. About a week later, I got a call from its owner who popped by my flat and gave me a $20 cash reward. All right, so again, students, this is your high band score. It's using present perfect, which is in the question. It's using some idiomatic language like pop by my flat. It's in context, okay? And it's a very clear and complete answer to the question. Now, last question, everyone. Here we go. If you lose your phone, what can you do? If you lose your phone, what can you do? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Make it your best. I'll give you one as well.
if I were to lose my phone, I could Google, find my phone, which will provide me with its last known location. In fact, two years ago, I did just that and found my phone at a local pub where I met my friends the night before. All right, so that's my answer. If you lose your phone, what can you do? If I were to lose my phone, I could Google find my phone, which will provide me with its last known location. In fact, two years ago, I did just that and found my phone at a local pub where I met my friends the night before. Yeah, so find my phone. It's a kind of an interesting app and it will float or an interesting service and it will locate your phone even if it's turned off. All right. Damon Preet says, well, I have an iPhone and it has the option of find my phone. So even if I lose it, I could find its exact location through my laptop. Very good. All right. Brown Jesus says, I would go crazy since my business depends on it, but I keep my data on the cloud. If unfortunately I couldn't find it, I would definitely buy a new one. <laughs> Brown Jesus, sure. But the question is, what can you do? Okay, so it's good that you back up your data in the cloud, but what can you do if you lose it? Make sure you're answering the question accurately. Okay, Saloni says, I felt miserable because my phone is the gadget which helps me to do my work. In case I lose it, I will file a complaint with the police. All right, Saloni, give the answer first and then give your emotional response. All right. Okay. Students, great job. Everyone, remember to impress the examiner, you have to be confident. You have to be loud. You have to be fluent, just like me. Okay. So be like me, be confident, be loud, be complete. Give answers, explanations, and examples to the questions. Reflect the grammar of questions in your answers. I see lots of great answers coming up as well from our members and others. That's fantastic. We're out of time, but I will be back tomorrow with some task two for members and listening parts one and parts two from one of our exams. So make sure to tune in tomorrow at the same time and a little bit earlier to watch the members chat classes. If you enjoyed my teaching and you want to get lots of HD videos for your phone and your PC, visit and download our apps and join our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for general IELTS. It's worth spending a couple dollars to get those premium packages and learn the right strategies to get those high marks. Much love to all of you. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. If it's late in your country, sweet dreams. Keep up the good work. Bye for now. Hopefully I'll catch you tomorrow.